Welcome to the uh, second episode of getting more from your tabletop simulator. Uh, this one we're going to talk about maps. Uh, episode two is about uh, building the 3D maps, uh, being able to put a little uh, uh, elevation on your maps, um, collecting the information from the maps, uh, being able to redraw the maps, and uh, help you through all that today. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll stick with me through the whole episode, and then we'll uh, uh, actually put that on tabletop simulator. Got a couple things to show you here. We've got uh, the uh, GIMP program up here in the center. Uh, what I've done is I've taken an image from one of the campaign guides of Itsa's Resolve Cup. And uh, you can see that the image is a little uh, off square, if you will. Uh, and uh, that um, image will um, you know, not really render very well in our uh, in our game, uh, so we want to make sure that it's square. Uh, this is pretty common if you take your photo with a cell phone, which is what I did. Uh, I've all, you can also use a scanner, um, and I usually wind up with some sort of an offset, and so we need to fix that up before we can get started. Um, just to give you an idea of the plan, so here's my final uh, image. This is the one that I've redrawn. I've highlighted the hills. I've uh, shown the outline of where the forest is at. Um, this uh, gives the players a good indication of even if I have to move some trees around or if there's no tree directly there, this is still a forested area. Um, I've also highlighted also where all the towns are uh, and uh, you can see all of the roads that go through uh, this, uh, this map. Um, this map is built up on layers, it's something else that we'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with layers, it basically renders uh, one layer and then after it renders it, then it would render the next layer uh, on top of it, uh, which might uh, mask off certain uh, areas of uh, uh, image so that uh, as uh, you don't have to be so careful on the bottom layers because um, uh, those are going to be um, uh, over, overwritten or over imaged or over rendered, if you will, um, as you move up. Um, we'll also be using uh, paths. You can see that there's quite a few, I've got quite a few paths that I've defined. Uh, each road net has a different path. Uh, each, the, the, the river has a path. Uh, and then we render uh, the image, or and re render the colors on top of, uh, on top of those. So um, stay with, stick with me here and we'll uh, take this one step at a time and we'll wind up with this finished image when we're done. So first thing, I want to go ahead and select this uh, this entire graphic. And one thing you notice here is that the uh, the grid points are a little off center. You can see the, how they're they're twisted. So what I'll do is I'll put down a few of these uh, guides just to keep an idea of what square should be and where where it should be uh, uh, where it should end up. And it also gives me an idea of how much. Uh, change I need to put into um, my image uh, so that I get the correct um, orientation. You can see for the middle there's a lot less stretching required than there is uh, on the right hand side at the top. And at the bottom there's a lot less stretching required. So we're going to have to deform this a little bit before we start uh, building it into a map. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I've got everything selected. So I'll use my Select and now everything is selected. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is bring out the uh, uh, tool that allows me to transform. So this is the uni unified transform tool. Uh, you can also get at it at uh, Shift T. Okay, so I need to move this thing out of the way. And I'll start my stretch. Stretch this so that it aligns with the image down here. I'll stretch that out a bit. So now it looks like I'm pretty square on this side and square on that side. Looks like I'm close to being square there. Um, and we have you can see the, the horizontal lines are a little off. So we'll go ahead and see what we can do to correct those. 
And I might have to shift the shear. And this is a right click on that menu item, by the way. So shear is shift H. So shift H. I gotta finish this transform first. So now shift H. Allow me to use shear. that and see where we end up. Not terrible. I'm going to go back to my unified transform and I'm going to pull this one node up a little bit here. So it's about 3,000 pixels wide. You can see that this one's a little bit off, so I'm going to fix that. So you hit the move tool, which is M. And I'll move my thing. You can see the 1500 is right about there. All right, and I've got the edge at 3000. So that's where my center line should be. I'm pretty close. Um, we're not building, you know, rockets here, so uh, it's okay to have a little bit of uh, uh, variation. Um, and let's see. So I'm uh, about 4000 wide. So I've got one, two, three, and that 4000. So about 1,600. Is that about right? No, that's about right. So 1,000, 2,500. So about 1,500 each. Not quite. That looks pretty close. So now let's go ahead and see if we can't resize this just a little bit to see to get that center line uh, back in place. Already selected. So now I just need to deform the the uh, entire uh, image, so to kind of move it back in place. So I'll just go ahead and unify transform again, and then see if I can't just bring it in just a little bit. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave it there, and then what I'll do is I will move this uh, this image I will uh, let's see I got some black I don't want so let's go ahead and fix that up where's zero at zero's there and down here is about four thousand I got some shear issues here so I'm gonna have to fix that before I save it So as you see, I just kind of had to fiddle with it a little bit until I get it to look like basically what I want. And then we'll go ahead and uh, render this. So let's see, go ahead, transform. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and save this. So what I'll often do is I'll save a, um, a uh, image from a GIMP, GIMP format and allow it to... Uh, I allow me to come back and, and fix things up if I find that I've made an error. So I'll go ahead and save this in my uh, directory here as uh, map image. And this is for the Jakob Bobo scenario, so I'll just go ahead and give it a name. And I'll go ahead and export. And we want to tell it that we're going to use JPEG. 
and so it's already said hey I'll, I think you want to call it this and I think that's a great a great name right there so I'll just go ahead and save it where it needs to go and then we'll go ahead and reopen that one just so that you can see that being rendered so uh, open my Mac map image Ekebovo which came up behind all my stuff. So here it is, it's now square and we can go ahead and start rendering on this. I'll close that one. I'll bring up our final state so you can see where we where we're en ending up, uh, uh, where our target is, and uh, we'll uh, start uh, building up this infrastructure. So the first thing is I want to do the full background. So what did I do in the original one? So I have a, a ground image. Uh, so if I remove all of my other layers. So I have this image. You say, well, gosh, where'd that come from? So this image is um, out of a um, pack of background fills. And uh, let me go ahead and show you where that is. All right, so now let's go back to our image and uh, we can use a reference. So you can see what I did on my original is I put a reference uh, as a layer that I can then turn on and off as I'm drawing. So, here's my map image Yakubobo. I'm going to go ahead and save this as uh, my working copy. And we're now actually talking about the map. So, I'm going to call it the map. Save the GIMP format, which is XCF. my right place. So I'll go ahead and save that. Now that it's saved, I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this layer to my reference layer. And I can now show it or not show it. And first thing that we're going to have to do is uh, build that background image. So I'm going to create a new layer. And this is going to be my background. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go select that uh, dark green grass as my reference, and we're going to use that as a fill on this entire layer. So fill, All right, bucket fill is shift B, and we're going to go ahead and fill this whole thing in. So see what it did? Is it um, use that image, that background image, uh, as a background fill. We can go ahead and see how that worked here. So use the dark green grass fill pattern. And now uh, I can set the opacity. How opaque do I want this to be? And that's over here on the layer as well. So I'm going to go ahead and max that out because I really want to see uh, this is the, the background that uh, will uh, be really underneath everything that uh, we have. So i um, bring my reference back, and I need to put my reference back on top so I can see it. There's my reference. Okay, that's going to be my background for everything. So my goal is not to redraw and this exactly from a... Uh, a graphic perspective. My goal is to uh, make this uh, in colors that I can see on Tabletop Simulator. So they will look different when we're done, uh, but the map is the whole purpose here. Alright, so next step is we need to start building some paths um, to highlight where the hills are at, uh, build some paths as to where 
the tree lines are at, um, of course all the paths that represent the uh, road nets uh, and the river. Uh, and this is really the tedious part of uh, this uh, tabletop simulator um, build package, uh, but it's, uh, you know, we have to do it one step at a time and we'll um, get, this, get this done. So uh, let me start adding some paths. Um, and when we get those paths uh, added, you'll see uh, how these, each of these layers um, will build up uh, into the, the finished graphic. Alright, so as you can see, I've got the various towns all highlighted here. Each of them shows up on uh, the towns layer. And so if I select the towns layer and get out of path mode, um, you can see that, I'll hide the reference for a moment, you can see that each of the villages is highlighted. And so then we're going to do the same thing with um, our uh, forest highlight all the forest areas and then after we get done with the forest uh, we'll go ahead and make that look like trees so give me a second here to get this uh, done and uh, I'll be right back with uh, that layer so first thing I'll of course do is add a layer and I'll call this the forest and I go to go create some uh, paths uh, that will then uh, render on that layer. So I want to make sure that that layer is highlighted before I start. And then we'll just start creating a path. And I'll just number these one, two, three, four as I need to go create paths. I think I'm going to make these two separate ones. In there and there. Control C, Control click, and that will make a forest there. And then I'll make another forest. Forest 2. Select it. pretty big one. that. Uh, one thing that you may not have seen me do is I created a shortcut. So I'm going to shortcut keys on the, um, 
on GIMP. Uh, you can set them to be however you like, what are good for your uh, your tool set. Uh, I wanted the path, uh, create path to be at E, because that's actually something that I use. So I set it up under uh, keyboard shortcuts, and then under paths, create a new path is now E on mine. Uh, which take it, took it out of the ellipse select, which I never used. So now that we have these different paths, these for us, go back and double check I'm on the right uh, path here. Uh, let's see, how did we do this originally? So go back to our original uh, map, one that we created for this and all I did is I just created a solid dark green outline so that's what we'll do the same thing use a solid green outline I'll hide this so we can see this so we'll create a solid green outline so I will get into green and then we're going to try a dark kind of a bright green to make it look like a woods and then I'm going to go select one of my paths or five and fill it there we go so now that shows all the path is all forced and I'll do the same thing for each of these So now we have our background, we've got our towns, we obviously have our road nets to still work on and the, and the river, but uh, you can see how this is starting to shape up like a map. So here's our current situation. Uh, we've got the background done, we've got the forests all arc, uh, we have the forests uh, defined, we have the towns defined. Uh, I think the background color should be a little lighter and perhaps the forest should be a little darker. So we're going to go fix that uh, before we continue on here. Uh, one of the ways I, I lighten up the background, I still like uh, the, uh, the texture that I've got for my background. It's a little repetitive, but that's all right. It will not uh, be so repetitive once we get the road nets on there. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, add another layer. put that below this background and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that uh, with white there we go you can see it showed up as white if I turn everything off you can see it actually is white and I'll set it up to 100% opaque so nice and bright white now, of course, I turn this background on and it's completely covered, but then what I'll do is I'll make that a little more transparent and that'll lighten up my uh, green background a little bit. So what that looks like next to my forest. So now I've got this kind of washed out grass and what I want to do with my forest now is I'm going to make them a little darker so we're going to pick another dark green here back to the green and instead of being quite so bright green we're going to go with a darker green and that means I have to go back to my paths and I'll go ahead and add the fill path with my new dark color and you'll see them start coming to fruition here
Okay, back to my reference. Okay, that gives my player something to look at. Maybe not so bright. Uh, and then uh, we'll go ahead and start adding in the hills next. So I'll bring my reference back up. You can see the outline of the hills. Okay, so the next thing to do here is we're going to start um, building up our uh, infrastructure. And we've got to put some hills in the geography here. And obviously there's none hills here. We've got to uh, put uh, the, the hills we'll represent with just an outline. Uh, we don't want to confuse the players with uh, all sorts of uh, symbology on the uh, tabletop, but it will give us an idea of where we need to uh, create uh, elevation ra uh, raised elevations in our 3D model once we get to that portion. Uh, but right now we're just going to go to the outline of the hills. Uh, we'll make that a kind of a brown outline, uh, and I'll get started on that right away. First thing is to add a new layer. That new layer is going to be called hills. And now we're going to find some paths. Those paths, we're going to bring our reference back up so that we know where we're drawing. And then we'll uh, kind of do that outline. So first pass. All right, first pass. We'll get put in some, follow that. Path of the hill. And it's hard to see exactly where that ridge line goes. I'm just going to say it goes straight across. And then down here, I think that there's a little valley in between these two. It's uh, not entirely clear, but uh, we'll do that. That'll be my first hill. I've got another little hill over here. And this one, I'm going to draw it all the way off the table, because I think that's where it's going to go. And then I have one more. So I think it starts off the table. See how it starts off there? So I'm going to start it off the table. clear exactly where it's, that ridge line goes to. We're going to say it goes right here. Just like so. So that gives me all my hills. Now we're going to stroke those hills with a color. And I'm going to pick kind of a light tan color, if you will. And then we're going to stroke this. Instead of filling it, we're going to stroke it with a solid color. Uh, we're going to use our paintbrush. So we're going to get our paintbrush tool out. And I'm going to try a 15 pixel wide. And we'll just try to do that on hill number three. There it is right there, and we've got our hills highlighted, so we'll go ahead and make sure that, stroke that, and I'll see that only after I hide the reference. So there you go, it's kind of a little outline of what that hill looks like. I don't think that's quite wide enough to really be seen well, so I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. Get my paintbrush tool back up. I'll give that a little wider here. Let's see if that helps us. And I'll restroke that pass using paintbrush tool. Stroke. So 
So I settled on a brush width of 30. That's what you see here for hill number three. I'm going to continue to do that and stroke uh, the other two hills. look about right. So that'll give me an idea of where my hills are supposed to go. Uh, that one looks a little weird. I'll have to figure that one out. So let's undo that one. Nice thing about Control Z. And I'll bring that one back up and align that to where it's supposed to be. and then we'll restroke that. Done. So after we've got the hills all stroked, this is what it looks like. Obviously this doesn't look much like a hill right now, but it will later. Uh, what we need to do is we need to get the forest on top of that though. So we're going to do that. Now obviously as everything's hidden, so we're going to have to make the forest a little bit uh, see-through. So we'll do that. And I'll make it so that now we can see our hills. Uh, we don't need it to be real bright on this tabletop anyway because we've got actual miniatures that are going to go on here on the floor. We're just showing the outline of that forest for our players. So there's that. And we'll use these outlines to help build our, um, our hills in uh, our 3D portion. And so now we've got this. Uh, next step is to basically create strokes for, um, or create paths for all of the um, all the roads and all of the uh, the rivers. So we've got the river and we got a little offshoot of that river over here someplace. So um, that's all of this stuff. And rather than you watch me do all that, I'm going to take a little bit of a break here and I'll start uh, detailing all of this. And then um, I'll return with a little bit more stuff here in a second. All right, now we have our rivers defined, we have our roads defined, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that we render those. Uh, start with the river. And I place the river on the river layer, so the river layer is highlighted. I want to get my river all at defined, and we're going to make the river nice blue. that and let's see what is our brush look like about 30 wide let's try that out see what that looks like
Stroke Path Paintbrush, 30 wide. That looks pretty good. And that's above our reference, so we can actually see it on top of the reference right now. Now we'll go ahead and get our roads done next. So we'll highlight roads. Let's go to roads. Uh, make this color something brown for our dirt roads. None of these are good roads. Nets. I don't see any that we left behind, so that looks pretty good. Down here, that's how it's drawn, so we'll go with that. So if I hide my reference, I should have all my road nets. So that is now complete. Move my reference up to the top. Make sure I hide my reference now. <coughs> so do I want my towns. I think I want the river to go on top of the town, but I want my towns on top of my roads. I can still see the roads a little bit underneath my forest, and if I want to make those a little brighter. The roads, opacities, make those a more solid. That looks good. Maybe I want to get those roads just a little bit wider. So, go ahead and make this somewhat wider. Let's go to 60. Let's double them in width and see what that looks like. Those look more like roads. The town's on top. Uh, the river goes on top of all of that, so we can see it cutting through the forest. We can see it cutting through the town. That's one of the Grozny here, I think it is. Uh, one of the one of the um, uh, villages. And um, there we go. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to make sure I save this. And then we're going to have to export this as a JPEG. Map Yakububo. I'm not going to overwrite anything, and I do want it as a JPEG. Which it should have done by that anyway, but I'm not going to trust that to give anything a chance. So. Export all my data. There it is. That'll be the map that we're working with uh, going forward. So uh, just join me for a second and let me go set up my 3D and we'll start working on uh, making these hills come alive, if you will. So, next step is we're going to get into Blender. And uh, I started up my Blender session here. Our next step is to get into Blender and to get that uh, hills and uh, the map actually to show into something that we can load into uh, Tabletop Simulator. So I uh, started up my Blender here, uh, default cube. Uh, note that um, I've got my uh, unit set to inches. Um, if you'd like to do that as well, um, units is under the scene. So uh, if you select Scene Properties, uh, you can see that if you open Units, you can set it to Imperial Units and Length is Inches. So that's what I'm going to do. And the queue is actually what I want, so I'm going to go ahead and start with that. <coughs> uh, this particular table is uh, 36 inches um, wide by uh, 24 high. Um, 
and then uh, I just make a half inch deep uh, cube. So this is the cube. Now, if I take this uh, cube and um, just uh, unwrap it uh, so that uh, you can see how this thing unwraps, um, I'll just do a default unwrap, and then we'll go look at what's called uh, UV, uh, which is each of the face of my cube has been mapped to a window, and then whatever gets rendered within that box will then be displayed on the side of the cube. Pretty cool stuff. Um, and if I load my image, it'll show up on here. The problem with just hitting UU and getting a default unwrap is you don't really know where is your face, the face that you really care about, the one that you want to be um, uh, showing uh, to the world. Um, I think it's going to be this one right here in the center. And it's just not uh, clear as to which face you're, 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 um, uh, you're actually editing here. So I got one or this one or unlike those. Now they're all gone. So it's um, not a uh, not a very uh, clever thing for you to, to try and figure out how to do that. Anyways, the easy way to do this is to tell Blender what is the top face. So what I do for that is it's just kind of like taking a box cutter to um, a cardboard box and uh, uh, really unwrapping the whole the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, component that I want to have as the image. I'm going to unwrap that whole piece. So I'm going to tell Blender that I want the um, uh, I'm going to want to mark um, where I want it to cut. So for the first thing I'm going to do is pick Edge Select, and I'm going to pick these three edges. I'm also going to pick that edge. So now I've got a, a cut three ways around the top, and it'll fold back uh, on that one. And I'm going to cut down these two sides here. I'm also going to cut down these two sides. Now I should be able to unwrap this whole thing. And what I have to do is I have to tell Blender, yep, that's what I really want to do. So mark scene. So that's where it's going to cut. And then I'm going to go ahead and unwrap it. All right, so now this top, this top component is going to represent my top box, and that's what I'm going to that's what I'm going to go ahead and put my image on. So I'm going to load an image. which we just created. So there it is. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this out. So scale first. And we'll move it.
That looks darn close. All right, we're gonna go with that. <coughs> so now um, we're not. We would like to see this over here in the in the main display. So there's my UV map that says map this to this uh, top layer. So next thing, I go back to my layout, and we're gonna find out that nothing renders. So the reason for that is that we haven't told it how to render it yet. And what we we'll have to do is go to our shading. And these nodes uh, represent how does Blender know what to put all, where to put each colors and where do the colors come from. And so we're going to have to add a texture, and it's an image texture, and we're going to use the same file that we just used. And then I have to tell it those colors are my base color and then suddenly I'm going to get some stuff over here and hopefully if I've done this all correctly we should render this and one of these edges it looks like I picked the wrong edge color from image, oh didn't tell it what file That's the map. There's the map over there. Go back to my layout. And the usual problem that I have is that it always seems to be 90 degrees off from what I want it to. But that's okay. We can go back to our UV model. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to rotate this whole this whole thing. So uh, I'm going to select everything. Hit rotate. pop up down here and I can actually make sure it's truly at 90 degrees. And then I'm going to go back to my scale. And I scale this way. And then I'm going to select those three elements and we're going to walk this one back right to there. Perfect. So it's this one and that one. Come in just a touch. Good. Now we should be able to show this back on the main page. And if you recall from our original map, this was the bottom where the, in, in this scenario, this is where the Russians enter and the French are defending in the castle. Um, there's two things here. You notice that it's real shiny. Uh, what we'll have to do is we'll have to knock down the uh, specular color and it takes care of that so now we've got our really our whole map is on a 3d object the only problem is, is we don't have any 3d yet so the next thing is to start building some of these hills and we do that I'm going to go back to this model make it a little bit easier to see and what I'm going to do is do a ring select the ring select and then I'm going to enter in ring select, and you can use a mouse wheel to, to uh, uh, start dividing this up. But what I want to do is I want to enter the data. And so we've got uh, 36, I'm going to have twice as many cuts. That's my 36. And then I'm going to do the same thing, ring select over here, and make this to be 24. Looks like 
I didn't get my first one in. This one is 72. And then I'm going to ring select this one. And do the same thing. Okay, so now I've got a little grid on top of my object. Select move, select get out of this. So now you see I've got a bunch of squares that I can uh, I'll be able to manipulate uh, this surface. So going back to my rendering here, you can see where the hills were defined, where we defined all these hills. So what I do is I'm going to select this uh, hill, all the surface, and I'm going to extrude that from the uh, original surface. So uh, we'll go ahead and start making some selections. terribly long. Uh, I'm going to finish the convention first and then I'm going to post it up to the workshop and you can see what I did, some of the things that uh, I've learned since I originally made it. Um, and we'll uh, certainly uh, welcome your comments and feedback on uh, what I did right, what I did wrong. And um, hopefully uh, you'll find some uh, utility out of it and make your, some of your own game. So I've now selected that uh, hill. So I'm going to hit E for extrude and I'll just drag it up a little bit. And the good news is, is I can enter in the data I actually want. I want it to come up four, four tenths of an inch. So now I have this giant thing that doesn't look much like a hill, um, but it is actually raised above, um, raised above the, uh, the uh, tabletop. If I go ahead and unselect this stuff here. You can see that our map is right on top of it. It's followed vaguely the lines that we followed for the for the hill. Um, there are some jagged edges around over here and but this is relatively this certainly an elevated thing that is definitely a hill. Um, what uh, we do next is we have to actually start smoothing this. And so I'll start this process uh, and then um, after uh, I've uh, had a had a chance to work with this a little bit, then we can uh, you can uh, watch me do it in uh, fast mode. So let me get these selected, and um, we'll uh, start doing some smoothing of this. I find you really have to play with this quite a bit to really make it uh, work out well. And you just kind of keep doing this for a while. And so um, I'm going to go away for a little bit and finish this up. And then uh, we'll get back together and we'll take a look at what this looks like. Uh, and then load this up to Tabletop Simulator. All right. So I've done some, sm I've done some sh uh, smoothing around the whole uh, of the hill. And you can see how it has incorporated and, and, and really uh, um, merged the uh, graphics. You can see how it kind of um, bleeds over a little bit. Uh, if you want, you can always have a second uh, image that you can load over top of this that uh, uh, instead of having the one with the outline of the hill, you can remove the outline of the hill. Uh, so the next step, uh, obviously after you save it, so I just called it testmap.blend, uh, you need to get this into something that the uh, tabletop Simulator can read. And the tabletop Simulator uses uh, a wavefront uh, format, and so we have to export our uh, map or this uh, this 3D model in a wavefront format. So I'm going to do that next. I'll just say wavefront and test map test map .obj, and I'm putting it in the making maps. That's my correct directory, and so it just uh, 
saved it, and we'll now go bring up Tabletop Simulator, which I happen to already have running here. Jose Maltoon is my game name. And so to, to move this in, all you got to do is bring up an object, saved object. Sorry, wrong thing. Components, custom, model. Place it here in the middle of the table. Turn. Sorry, escape. Get out of that. Don't need that. Don't need this. So it's going to be material we're going to use is cardboard. The model. It's my test map. That obj. Select. And I'll just leave it local for now. But you can upload it to the cloud. And then your image. And this is the map Yakubovo that we created. Click. I'll just leave that local for now too. And I say import. And there's a little tiny map in the middle of the screen. So what I have to do is make it a little bigger. Uh, it looks like it's rotated the wrong way too. So I'm going to select it. And I'll map it. It's pretty tiny. We need to rotate it. We need to make it a lot bigger. So I'm going to select it. I've got my move gizmo. Uh, I'm going to put in a scale of 40, 40, 40. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. 90. There we go. So now it looks pretty close to the correct dimensions. Um, one thing that you want to do here is uh, make sure that you toggle lock. You do not want your players moving your game board. It is not a happy situation. Um, looks like I'm pretty close to where I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and move it down a little bit. And in this case, down is Y. I cannot tell you the reasoning for that, but it is the direction. Okay, so there we go. It's now, you can see it's actually gone through the surface of the tabletop. So I'll bring it back up a little bit. And we'll do a little flyby here. I'll get out of this. You can see I've got my hill right in the middle there. Actually rendering pretty well. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode of getting more out of your tabletop simulator. This episode was about maps and building maps for tabletop simulator.